our, our former guest and our next guest uh, actually know each other, and they're not talking with each other instead. <laughs> yes. I think our first time we have two doctors in a row. Yeah, it, yes, and uh, this our second one, who's now in a conversation with Bob, is, has already told us uh, to ignore everything that uh, Dr. Chandler told us. I, I didn't know we were going to have adversarial doctors. Uh, I didn't know there was such a thing like that. It's exciting. It is. Everything I say. He's going to receive everything I say. I think they're mortal enemies. Take care. I know. So now our next guest is Dr. Stephen Go uh, Goldman. Dr. Steve, Steve yes. yes, this is your microphone right here. Otherwise, it was live. Steve, good Hi, to see you. Stephen B. Goldman, I'm sorry, what's going on? <laughs> good to see you. You too. What's up? At least uh, this time, I'm not seeing you over Zoom. Yeah, you've been on the show uh, before, so we have to. Good to have you here. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, like most everyone in our industry, I did not major in business continuity. I came the weird way. I made I have two degrees in nuclear engineering. Of course. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Makes yes. Sense. And I was out of the power plant, and somehow someone in corporate figured I could put a subject of predicate in my order, <laughs> do an adjective <laughs> from a noun. So you got to go to public relations to be a nuclear spokesperson. It's like, give me a break. You know, I mean, I, when I get up in front of people, I, I get, not only we get sick that morning, I mean, get sick the night before. It's terrible. But it was, it was excellent. I worked with journalists who I had to learn how to speak, I had to learn how to write. I had to learn how to deal with news media, the public, give speeches, and convert my technical knowledge of the language people understood. And so that was really good. And then, um, then, then the Three Mile Island nuclear accident happened. And I was like one of three people in the country to talk about. It. I managed to say, sure, discuss it. And that led me into nuclear nuclear emergency planning, which led me into corporate emergency planning, which led me to very into. I um, been a crisis manager, I've been a VC responder, I've been a director of business continuity for Silicon Valley High Tech Company. I got laid off uh, many years ago, and I just said, all right, I'm single. They gave me a pile of money. I'm going to get my doctorate. So I got a doctorate in education. The figure being a 50-year-old doctor in nuclear engineering. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not big on the market. And so uh, I did that, and I got it in education so I could understand how people learn how to speak better. Hopefully, I love it. So I, I now run... Uh, Two, three courses at MIT are crisis management, business resilience, and two regular as I call them. One advanced, and uh, this year I've just been appointed co director of uh, at Harvard School of Public Health, the radiological and So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a great career. I love the people and what we do, and uh, it's a great industry. It's really great. We think so. Yeah, who would have thought the Three Mile Islands? It's like we have such a profound impact on the positive. This is true. And also in the industry itself, we had exercises, we had emergency plans, but they were no good, not good enough. So Three Mile Island formed lots of lots of regulations, lots of plans, lots of power. FEMA was came about as three as a result of the lack of coordinated response to the Three Mile Island accident. Well, you know, it was a bad action. Nobody got killed, nobody really got injured, but a lot of good things came from a bad accident. I still remember that. Great eight, believe it or not. <clears throat> and I remember that uh, announcement coming out. Did you hear what happened? And, you know, it's all over the news. Did they think that you never really heard about any of that kind of yeah. thing happening back then? So a lot of people in our profession don't often think of like crisis management as something they can learn in an academic institution like time. So what's what's one of the bigger misconceptions that people who come to the class for the first time or don't have a lot of familiarity with? Is there like a common misconception they have before coming to your class that you often see? Probably they think that IT equals disaster recovery. And it doesn't. IT is not disaster. Um, 
leadership in a crisis is way different from leadership in real life. You know, we're gonna, we're working, we have to cook that if we're going to present or whatever. That requires a set of skills to lead a crisis as far as a different but as important set of skills. The other thing is public relations is not crisis communications. People right. Say, well, I do PR. Every day around here is a crisis. I can do crisis communications. Not the case. And so when they come to class, we do a lot of case studies, a lot of, hey, I, I've been in your shoes. We can speak this literally all over the world. We talk about how to do things, a lot of case studies. And we do two, um, two simulations. We put it through half. Did you make anyone cry? It's, uh, I can't disclose that. that. <laughs> I cannot disclose that. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you said that that leadership is not crisis leadership. It's so often when I was and we're putting them into the crisis management team. Nine times out of ten, the first thing they say is, well, our, our CEO is the crisis management team. And it's, yeah, okay, has your CEO ever led crisis? Because to your point, it's completely different than running a business on the blue screen as opposed to, you know, things are not fire. Yeah, I have an ex-wife, two cats, and a bartender who rely on me for support. So in addition to teaching at school, I also um, I consult. So the school actually wants us to get out, talk to companies, bring the information back and share it. So it's a win-win situation. So same thing. I go out and talk to companies, and some CEOs, I've seen them fail in exercises. And it's, just, it's just not good. So we try a different skill set, a different feeling for things, and make decisions much quicker than, well, let's let this committee take care of that. Absolutely. That's always been a good thing. We're starting to have just how crisis is. I love that. Your cat and your bartender are all part of the crisis management. Now, you have a session here. Yes. Well, um, yesterday, I did. Uh, your practical guide to successful drills and exercises. Two and a half hour workshop. I start from, you know, what are you, what are you doing with these scope and objectives all the way to how to run. The issue is interesting. I incorporated AI in terms of developing pictures and, and newscasts and whatever for your exercises. So you've got a data center. Pretty sure IT is not going to let you go down there and destroy it for your exercise. So you come, up, <laughs> come up with a picture. Here's the data center. Use AI to modify. What does this data center look like after Mercury, after a project? And you give that to IT. Say, okay, this is what you got. The system's down. Now what? Instead of just saying the system's down, they want to know what to do with the picture. They look at their picture. They go, okay, this isn't coming back anytime soon. So we go into that plan instead of the initial plan. It works out well. We generate newscasts uh, based upon the events. We used to actually get news reporters to help us with that. So this is generally news really? News. Oh, yeah, real news, yeah. They'd be part of the drill. And that's based upon what your spokesperson said, this is the story I would write. And they would have to do it. Wow. That was oh, good. Yeah, oh, it's wonderful. Now yeah. I know why people cry. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He didn't admit to it. Yeah, I won't admit to it. But the look on your face kind of. Yeah, 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 that's you. <laughs> So we do that. I, I, I joke about it, but I really mean it. In <coughs> drills and exercises, you have to make it hurt. You have to make it make the players go through what they're actually going to go through and then stop. So it actually hits them. They, they feel they can do it. Well, that's I, I, like I think that's the problem with a lot of exercises that organizations do. They, they want it to go well. They don't want people to be uncomfortable. They don't want people to be surprised. But yet, that's political. not the way life is. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, it becomes really political. And one of my one of my topics is the company politics of girls and exercises. Who wants you to succeed? Who wants you to fail? Who doesn't care? And as part of the astute business continuity manager has to know that going in. And what I do is as a consultant, I also have to know who's on first and second. So, you know, I'm not going to make my client look bad. I'm not going to make me look bad. Seriously, not going to make the executive look bad. So it's a, great. It, it, it's really great, like human relations, corporate relations, corporate interaction. That's why I love what we do. It's not one of the failings of our tests and exercises is the pass fail. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It, it, it shouldn't be. Okay, we should have objectives. You should be able to pass the ball, but you got to understand what you're doing. So, like I can. This is an example from Confucius. If you see something. Yeah, you might learn it. If you hear it, you may learn it. So you actually do it. 
Then you understand. So it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't want people opening up some of this software going, what do we do? I want that muscle memory. I want them to know what they have to do, get started, get online, get going. And at the time of a real event, that's not the time to figure out how do I do this. That's right. Who do I call? What do I do? How do I do this? You're dead. Apparently, they, uh, Steve has brought family here. I brought my brother. My mother made me take him, so he's here. <laughs> Uh, how are you enjoying the conference so far? Oh, I always enjoy. I've been here. I realized this is my thirtieth year. I think it's just wait, 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 wait a minute. We just heard that number from we Dr. Chan. Bob said arch, that too. Yeah, yeah he said your that too. Arch nemesis. Yeah, no, friends. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Patty Fitzgerald, the late Patty Fitzgerald, found wow. me in uh, 1994 for the first conference. Wow. That was interesting because it was in Atlanta. The West Coast it was in Atlanta, and. Um, at the same time of our conference, they had um, Miss Atlanta. Right the same hotel. Same hotel. And so I get into this room and I look around like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good looking enough to be in this industry. <laughs> they thought they were all part of the business continuity industry. So uh, I realized, okay, they're just like me. Normal. <laughs> yeah, 30 years. Right? You see the ups and the downs, the backs and the forwards. Companies have come, companies have gone, companies are still here. Fascinating yeah. business, it really is. Well, it's great to have you stop by and chat with us today, Steve. Thank My you pleasure. so much. It's good to see you again. Yes, actually, Regina awesome. Belt is next. Yeah. It's this amazing because there's Bob, then me, then Regina, so you get the top three in the industry all in a row. Nice. And then we're just going to end the broadcast after that. We'll just shut it down. Yeah, everything is downhill after that? Everything is downhill. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll go get Regina. I'll let you guys go yeah. to uh, your, your program. Right, Great. Thank, thank you so, so much, Steve. Take care. Take care. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.